Tesla was probably a guy that was like 200 light years ahead of his time. I mean, look, the guy invents, look, he was the only guy that would sit in 100 foot lightning bolts. I mean, what was he doing there? He was studying the gas, the etheric gas, because he said it was a gas. Yes, he knew. He knew because he was a great studier of the experiment. You see, do we really do the experiments today? No. We just build what they tell us to build. We don't do any more experiments. You know, we don't learn from our experiments. We don't learn from the observation. You know, it's already in the book. It's been done. Don't waste your time. Here it is. These are the formulas. Learn them and you'll pass. Through the switch, the wire glowed, killing the operator. And as soon as the current caught up, the glow went away. That's the energy that we want to capture. So now what we want to do is we want to take this dead battery And we'll get this thing to go here. See that it changed in tone? Now we're gonna tell it to go. And we're gonna watch over here. This is was a completely dead battery and you're gonna see what's coming over here because now we have told it to charge the hell out of it, see? So see it's up to 24 volts already. So this was a dead battery, so what we've done is we've increased these pulses now eight times. Tapping into the energy of the vacuum for unlimited free power, we'll be exploring the work of inventor John Bedini and taking a deep look at his pulsed flywheel generator, which he claims can pull energy from the quantum vacuum. Stick around. This has the potential to change everything. To understand Bedini's invention, we first need to grasp what the vacuum really is. At the smallest scale, the vacuum isn't empty at all. It's teeming with quantum fluctuations and zero-point energy. Scientists now believe this seething sea of energy in the empty space all around us may contain more power than all the stars in the universe combined. If we can access even a tiny fraction of it, the implications are huge. Sadly, Tapping this energy won't be easy. Many brilliant inventors throughout history stumbled upon free energy technologies only to have their work suppressed or stolen. We'll examine some of the most shocking cases, like Nikola Tesla's Wardenclyffe Tower and how it may have harnessed wireless energy from the sky. With so much at stake, skeptical scientists accuse these pioneers of perpetuating perpetual motion myths. Are they just quacks, or are we missing out on earth-chattering discoveries? Enter John Bedini, an ingenious tinkerer and innovator who refused to believe unconventional energy couldn't be harnessed. We'll learn about his background, what led him to pursue free energy research, and how he persevered despite immense skepticism and hurdles. His groundbreaking work may have serious implications for everything from power generation to transportation, if he can prove the naysayers wrong. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. How exactly does Bedini's invention work? We'll explore the inner workings of his pulsed flywheel generator and monopole battery concept. Special attention will be paid to the carefully timed pulsing which Bedini says accesses additional energy from the quantum field. Is it all just clever trickery, or does he have his finger on something groundbreaking? Bedini has published experimental data he says conclusively proves his device consistently outputs more energy than is put into it. We'll examine this data closely and try to interpret what it really shows. If true overunity has been achieved, 
What could this mean for addressing climate change, ending poverty, and colonizing other worlds? The potential is literally unlimited, but is it too good to be true? Of course, Bedini has faced intense skepticism and even hostility from those unwilling to accept new paradigms. We will look at some of the major criticisms, such as concerns about experimental controls or flawed measurements. Are these doubts justified, or are too many observers blinded by bias? How might independent replication settle the debate one way or the other? Despite opposition, Bedini has continuously improved and expanded upon his prototypes. We'll explore updates and current efforts like the D18 Magnetic Chunt Motor Slash Generator Suite. Is he making progress towards a market-ready product? Are other researchers building on or branching out from his ideas? Where might this all lead if the theoretical foundations pan out? To really understand Bedini's claims, we need to appreciate radical new theories emerging in physics. Quantum mechanics is overturning centuries of classical dogma and pointing to energies in the vacuum vastly greater than anyone imagined. Pioneers like Nikola Tesla, Victor Schoberger and Royal Reif may have had their fingers on something profound without fully realizing it. Could Bedini have found a way to access this promise? Through rare interviews, we'll hear from Bedini directly. What really motivates him after all these decades? His vision is about more than technology. It's about our relationship with free energy and each other. If a new paradigm emerges, how might it uplift society? What responsibilities would accompany such a breakthrough? What really lies at the heart of Bedini's work? For the theories to gain mainstream acceptance, independent verification is crucial. We'll look at efforts by researchers and citizen scientists to replicate Bedini's results. Some claim to have observed anomalies, while others report failing to break even. What experimental tweaks or insights have brought some groups closer? Where do attempts currently stand, and what more is needed? In a strange twist, Bedini's work may be connected to the development of the atomic bomb. We'll explore a declassified document hinting that researchers in the Manhattan Project briefly evaluated free energy concepts like those of Bedini and Tesla. Could weapons programs have since suppressed related technologies to protect military advantages? The stakes of this history could be hard to overstate. It's important to understand why most physicists remain highly skeptical of overunity claims. We'll survey standard objections around conservation of energy and explain limitations of mainstream quantum theories. However, are these views in need of revision as new experiments probe quantum weirdness? Could established wisdom be missing nuances that mavericks are grasping intuitively? To provide varied perspectives, we've assembled short interviews with professors, engineers and researchers directly engaged with Bedini's work or related frontiers. We'll hear thoughtful takes on current barriers and promising leads, as well as opinions on how extraordinary discoveries might emerge from fringes into accepted frameworks. If there's truth to Bedini's process, what does the pathway to validation look like? We'll outline constructive steps like independent study, collaboration between dissenters and proponents, rigorous blind testing, and open-sourced prototypes. With care and rigor, Controversies may resolve into new horizons, but progress depends on facing uncertainties head-on, not denying them. Exciting times could lie ahead. Before wrapping up, we'll tackle some of the most common questions raised about Bedini's research and free energy quests generally. Can overunity be ruled out by node laws? What about thermodynamics? Do results truly indicate new physics or is there a mundane explanation? With an open and rigorous spirit, even skeptics and proponents have more to learn from each other. In closing, 
It's clear this topic raises profound questions about what's possible from science and technology, but also human potential. If we embrace uncertainty with dynamism instead of denial, breakthroughs may arise. But realizing civilization-level discoveries demands we shed limitations and come together across divides in true cooperation and understanding. The future is unwritten. As a bonus segment, we'll spotlight an intriguing technology connected to Bedini, hydrosonic pumps researched by Dr. James Hardy. By using magnets and sound, they could push water uphill without external energy, an apparent perpetual motion machine. We'll tour available evidence and consider whether a new hydrodynamic paradigm underlies this bewildering effect. Is it a flawed experiment or a key clue? To conclude our supplemental materials, we'll provide a guide for further exploration. What books, papers, websites and videos are worth consulting next? How can people get involved in citizen science efforts or discussions around unifying new theories? With curiosity and perseverance, breakthroughs in energy and physics may prove closer than supposed. Exciting work lies ahead. I want to extend my deepest thanks to everyone who joined us on this fascinating journey. Please remember that scientists of all eras have faced doubts about new possibilities, yet paradigm shifts often stem from mavericks examining nature from fresh angles. As researchers push to understand zero-point fluctuations and new quantum weirdness, keep an open mind. If history and scientific method guide us rightly, revolutionary insights may emerge from unlikely places and people, even about energy sources many now think impossible. Our future remains unwritten. Until next time.